Well, the Clintons may be turning against their campaigner in chief, criticizing the signature health care legislation, Obamacare. I want to take a listen to what Bill Clinton said about Obama and what he created in a health care system. So you've got this crazy system where all of a sudden 25 million more people have health care, and then the people are out there busting it sometimes 60 hours a week, wind up with their premiums doubled and their coverage cut in half. It's the craziest thing in the world. A newly discovered audio from Hillary Clinton at a fundraiser one year ago indicates that even she acknowledges that the system, well, it has its flaws. I'm going to defend the Affordable Care Act. It has done a lot of good, but I'm going to fix some of the things that need fixing. Now, Hillary Clinton just addressed this, in fact, a short time ago in a press conference. But how does President Obama feel about the Clintons and, uh, and their stabs that they're taking at his signature political achievement? Uh, joining me now to discuss, Michael Warren, Blake Rutherford, and, and Peter Morisi. Peter, let me start with you. It's so funny because for a moment there, Bill Clinton could have been on with uh, Varney and Company. <laughs> he could have taken your spot on Varney and Company talking about Obamacare. Well, there are fundamental problems with Obamacare. It subsidizes people to buy health insurance. That does nothing to control costs. In fact, it encourages them to increase. Also, people don't get a lot of insurance when they buy a bronze plan, for example. You know, that 60-hour-a-week worker that Mr. Clinton was talking about, he buys a bronze plan, can't, can't plan, he takes his kid to the beach, he bangs his head, he goes to the closest emergency room, finds out that that emergency room is not in his network, gets a bill for $4,000, and he's bankrupt, just like the old system. Yeah, you know, Michael, um, uh, there, there are so many things that... Um that they got wrong here, including uh, 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 overestimating how many millennials would take the bait uh, and, and so forth. And also, they were heavily criticized because it feels like the insurance companies wrote this thing, and when their backstops ran out, <laughs> they abandoned the whole program. So we know it's a political hot potato, and the Clintons are trying to get in front of it, but how, how, what kind of a game are they playing by dissing the president's so-called signature achievement? Yeah, isn't it ironic, Charles, that uh, in a Seinfeld campaign, an election about nothing, we could actually be talking about a substantive policy issue in the last five weeks of the campaign. Uh, and even more ironic, uh, this, is, uh, this issue is something that's really, I think, where Democrats are most vulnerable among the issues. And who's the first to bring it up? Not Donald Trump, not Mike Pence, not any Republicans, but Bill Clinton. Uh, I, I'm not sure what they were thinking here, maybe trying to get ahead, you know, trying to sort of forge a third way and get some of those swing voters who are concerned about uh, these uh, uh, rate hikes and premiums and these sorts of things, uh, who might be a little wary about voting for Donald Trump. I guess that's what they're doing, but, you know, they have to watch their base on the left, uh, which, right. which does view this law as, as being a positive thing. You know, Blake, I, I would assume they've done a few focus groups and found that this is an extraordinarily strong uh, topic for Donald Trump maybe trying to get in front of it, but they certainly also, by doing this, made the case for him, haven't they? I, I actually am, am going to disagree with you here, Charles. I don't, I don't think that they've made the case for Donald Trump. I think the conversation has to be, and it has been throughout this entire campaign, and it's consistent with the president's message, which is there are things that we need to address with Obamacare going forward. Hillary Clinton has been consistent with that position from the very beginning, talking about its positives and recognizing what we need to address as we move forward. The Republicans, as we know, haven't offered an alternative. And I think here, this is why they can't make the case for Donald well, Trump. Be because you, Donald Trump like, doesn't, have, doesn't have an alternative plan. If he did, this you, would be an the, interesting the, debate, but he Democrats just doesn't. The Democrats haven't offered up an alternative themselves, but, I mean, the trade-off is the key. They, they brag about 20 to 25 million people with insurance, and yet you have so many small businesses, so many middle-class folks who were doing okay. It was a tough call, but it's so much rougher now. And to Peter Marisi's point, they've got a watered-down plan. And by the way, they've long lost that relationship with their doctor. Oh, that's gone. Well, I... I I, I think, I think Charles, what we, what we have to focus on here in the context of this debate is where we, where we were before the Affordable Care Act and where we're headed. And I think the Republicans' idea of going back to the old system it simply isn't productive. Americans don't want that. They didn't well, Peter, like that old system. Peter, they may not like Obamacare all that much, but they quick. really don't like the old system. Because, Peter, no one's saying, saying re re repeal and go back. They're saying repeal and replace. But how do you articulate that in a way that people get it. 
Well, you have to have a program that makes some sense. For example, one that doesn't compel people to buy insurance that they don't want and that has minimum coverage requirements that really mean something. I mean, what is good, good is it to say you have to cover all these ailments and all these activities if they can turn around and sell it with $6,000 deductible? Now, also, you're going to have to do something about profiteering in this context. You can't create a system that compels insurance companies to pay prescription drugs and then let the right. prescription drug companies set any price right. they want. Yes. That's absurd. It is absurd. It's, it's absolutely nuts. And I think that's, that's something we all could agree on. It's bipartisan nuts. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Well, the stock market uh, had a real tough day of it. Uh, investors concerned about a whole lot of things. All of a sudden, Brexit is back in the conversation.